Hello, Hopkins, and welcome to the Hopkins Hangout Hour. It is Wednesday, April 7th, and with us tonight, our favorite Board of Health agent, Don Director, Mr. Sean McCullough. Sean, thank you for taking the time out yet again. Okay, I, I, can't, I can't stop thanking you enough for that. No, no it's, it's, it's my, my pleasure. pleasure. And then, you know, no. it's, it's really important for us to, you know, get out in front of um, some of these issues that are facing the community right now. So it's, it's my pleasure to be here. Well, thank you again. So let's, let's, let's start off. Uh, just a small subject. We won't we won't bear on too much, but uh, everyone's talking about Monday that the schools are back, but the the back in somewhat like a uh, limited capacity, right? Just a middle school or elementary. Can right. you explain that? It's um, what is it? it? You know, actually, actually it, it, it's, it's everything but um, everything but the high school. I, to be honest, the uh, the school. The school has done a really good job at basically embracing all of their their COVID responsibilities, and they've actually hired uh, several staff to uh, assist them with their duties. So, you know, not not that we're not involved with the schools, but uh, um, you know, I'm not on top of it. But every uh, you know, what school is open and what school is not. So well, I know I know the high school isn't open yet, but um, I, 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 actually, I, the, the middle school must be open because uh, I'm not dealing with cases there. So, yeah, so the, the main reason, and the only reason that I even brought that up is because uh, I wanted to talk about how um, the numbers are going up, but it, it, it doesn't see, everyone thought, oh, the school's going to be a big problem. You put all the kids in the school and numbers are going to start rising. But we got rising numbers now, which you want to talk about tonight, and not necessarily mm -hmm. all from the school. So explain why Hopkins cases are starting to see a little upswing. Well, so first off, you know, this is happening across the country, and certainly Massachusetts is, you know, unfortunately leading the way with um, the P1 variant or the Brazilian variant um, down on the Cape. And... Um, we're, we're seeing an extreme surge um, of the British variant. Um, you know, on our meeting on Tuesday with the Mass DPH, they made a point to let us know that the um, that community spread is present throughout the Commonwealth, and that um, if you're seeing unusual trends in your infection rates and and just the, the mode and the rate um, and the presentation of infection, um, you're more than likely experiencing the British variant. And, you know, Casey and I have been reviewing our, like our case flow. And, you know, and, and most people, most people have a, a general kind of ebb and flow to their day, be it on the weekend or during their work day, where you, you know, you know, you can just feel it. It's it's you know, and it's something that you're familiar with. And over the last, what we realized is that, you know, March, um, it, it's it's like we're dealing with an entirely different virus. And um, I was I've been using a fishing analogy all day, where typically with the the common COVID strain. You know, it's like fishing with a, uh, you know, a rod and reel. You cast it out, you catch one COVID, then there's a time period, and I equate that to, you know, removing the fish, rebaiting it, um, casting again. And, you know, the virus had, there were some limiting, like limiting rates of transmission because it took the time, you know, it took the virus time to replicate. Um, it needed specific conditions in which to transmit to others. This vi this British variant is entirely different. It's like fishing with a net. So you see um, one source case and then three to five. And then you see it, it get into a family and where families spread with traditional COVID. You know, we have cases where um, the traditional COVID would take over a month 
to, to work its way through a family. Um, now we're seeing spread within the entire family within three, four, five days. Um, so, you know, I've been in touch with the DPH um, almost every other day, um, just discussing this. And I've been requesting um, that they come in and confirm that it's the bridge variant that's spreading through um, the town. Um, I actually, I've been in contact with the Broad Institute to see if um, we could collect samples from um, our active cases and submit those to the Institute for sequencing. Um, we were told no, um, but on Tuesday's call, they um, announced that the, the CDC and the uh, DPH are gonna be changing the, the way that they, um, they report out uh, the variant cases in the Commonwealth and they're changing their surveillance strategy. So we should see or receive some more insight as to um, the, you know, what is spreading throughout each community, the rate of which it's spreading throughout the community and the percentage of the variant versus um, the standard COVID case in each community. So. There are, there are four, there's the, actually there are, <laughs> right now I only wanna think, there, there, there are only, I wanna say three, maybe four in this area. This is standard COVID. We have the British variant um, that we believe is the source of the majority of the illness in town. The, the P1 or the Brazilian variant is present down in the Cape. And at present, we have the highest number of P1 cases in the um, in the country. And then there's a New York variant that I actually know of cases that cases that are people that were in Hoppington doing work that were later diagnosed with the New York variant. So that that's another question that I've got to the uh, DPH, but. Um, that variant is predominantly found in uh, the New York City area. So, um, and, and as I said, you know, one of the, the problems with this variant is the British variant is that it just, it, 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 it's just much more uh, transmissible. So we're seeing, um, we're seeing, you know, clusters come out of, you know, we've got, I don't know, maybe 10 sports clusters right now. And, and there's an article out that I, I'm gonna try to get posted to um, the website um, that, you know, that the, this, this research article, I think it, part of it comes out of the Scripps Institute. Some of it's um, in association with the CDC. And um, they, I think it was posted in the Washington Post it discusses how the British variant loves athletics. Um, because it's a, uh, it, it only needs a short exposure to a larger population and that whole population. So, you know, if you have a, uh, a huddle in a football game, or if um, you have a, uh, you know, a, a post, you know, a post game celebration or photo op, that, that opportunity is enough for um, the virus to spread to multiple individuals. And, um, right. so, so would that mean that it's not so much the event location, but teams? Yeah, it, it's just exposure to, well, and, and, that, and that's this whole thing about, you know, we talk about exposure where, um, you know, it's, it's really important, especially now, to be limiting your exposure to others. You know, if there was ever a, a time where I was going to advise people to really pull back and limit your exposure outside of your household, it would be now. Um, because, you know, yesterday alone, I think Casey put from one in one cluster, she put 78 people into quarantine. Um, I think our total yesterday was about 104. Um, we have, um, uh, we have 100 and we have 170 um, in quarantine at the uh, in the school system. 
Um, and it's it's really, and, and you know, we talk about, you know, is it the school or not the school? You know, when we start digging into these uh, these cases um, that are popping up in the school age children, we find that no, they were exposed to someone at a lacrosse game, a soccer game, a basketball game, um, a gymnastics event, at a wrestling event. Um, I have three hockey clusters right now. Um, it's I went to the movies. I was driving around um, in the car with friends. Um, there were, uh, we believe the some of the initial British variant cases possibly came from a dance and cheer club. Um, and um, and then there's um, there's just been some. Uh, there was another case that we believe came out of a uh, uh, a gym in um, in a local town, um, and we've just seen, you know, those exposures lead to, you know, five, ten, or more cases in town. Um, so so sorry, again, you know, it, it, it's it's limiting your exposure. If you've got allergies, right now, most people are ex that are contracting this British variant are experiencing headaches, um, runny noses, um, an irritated throat, um, and maybe a short cough. They're not experiencing fever, chills, um, and some of the other more common um, symptoms. It's, it's, and, and it's this fact that, you know, right now our pollen counts are really high. So people like me who suffer from seasonal allergies are you know we're head cases because we don't know is it that allergy um you know is it allergy symptoms or you know do i have you know the start of covid and what i advise people is first thing you do is you take your allergy medication if your symptoms subside it's allergies um and if they if they don't you really should um, get tested and you should be consulting with your uh, well because Everything that you described, those symptoms, sounds like me waking up every day. No, you, you know, just on my, five, my, it, my it, five year old looked like she was, you know, I, I was joking. I'm like, you look like you're hungover. You know, she came out, she, her hair was all over the place. She's like, I don't feel good. She, you know, she had watery eyes. And, and I'm like, the watery eyes, that's not typically a COVID symptom. Uh, she grabbed her thermometer, you know, zapped her head. She's like, no, 97, eight, I don't have a fever, dad. So she's got the, you know, she's got the uh, routine down pat and, uh, you know, we've got her uh, children's Claritin and her symptoms went away like that. And, um, and then, you know, we called in, had a quick chat with the, uh, the nursing staff at the, uh, you know, my daughter's school and, you know, she's back. Um, but, uh, but, you know, what we're seeing is a lot of instances where people have thought that they had allergies and they've continued to go to work or they've continued to um, participate in, event, in events. Um, and um, it turns out that they've had COVID the whole time. So what you're describing to me, it seems, that when you mentioned about these sports groups and you talk how well the schools are doing everything, it, it sounds like these are like the club or youth non-school yeah. related sports they're, they're all your clubs right. and everything that goes along with that right, right. and and the, the thing that you know the thing that's terrible about this is that you know these because these you know activities that are outside of the school um you know there they're, there are hundreds of school children involved in these so inevitably when you have um an outbreak in a you know a, a, in a sports team it, it has a significant impact on, um, you know, the schools. So, you know, we look back two days from the start of symptoms. So if, you know, they were playing, say, soccer on, you know, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, symptoms started on Friday evening, we're looking back, you know, to Wednesday and, and all of those kids that, you know, might have had, uh, you know, and, in classroom exposure to this case now are getting swept up. So, um, 
and, and this this is it's highly disruptive to the school system. It's certainly highly disruptive to um, people's lives. You know, parents have to stay home, um, watch the kids. Um, you know, kids are isolated. It, it, I mean, I, I just keep on pushing the best way to avoid all of this inconvenience and stress and worry is to just, you know, pull in a bit and uh, and certainly make sure that, um, you know, you're, you know, you and the family are wearing masks, staying distance, um, you know, um, certainly staying home if you're sick. Right. Um, so I have, and, uh, we, got a, we got a question here from one of our viewers and uh, John asked, how much concern about the return to school and I know you didn't want to touch on schools, but how much concern about the return to school following the upcoming April vacation? It has to believe one or two families may travel on a vacation. So uh, how much concern? And that's something that um, Dr. Kavanaugh and I are going to be discussing this week um, because, you know, people are traveling and, and you know, we, we know that there's, we know that there's a high prevalence of the British variant, the um, Brazilian variant, and then there's some South American variant variant in the uh, the southern, we'll say, Gulf states. Um, we know that you know if you're traveling um, to uh, like the New York City area, you've got you're at risk of contracting that New York variant. There are now there have been several California variants that have been identified, and just in general, you know, the, the more you're traveling, the, the greater your exposure is. So, you know, if if you're, you know, I know that there are families going to Aruba. I know there are families going to the Bahamas. Um, um, I actually, there's a family that's having troubles going to the Bahamas because of, uh, um, because, you know, the Bahamas don't necessarily want anybody that can't demonstrate that um, they fully recovered from COVID um, in their uh, country. Um, so, and, and I know that there are other countries right now that are looking at the spread of these variants in the U.S. and saying, you know, they're, they're looking to tighten up their borders so that they don't see um, spread. So, yes, it, it's a con it's a, it is a concern. And, and now the, the issue now is that we, so Carol and I will go to DESE and we'll say, you know, I've got a... Uh, you know, right now our positivity rate in Hopkinton is, it's above the state level, it's at 3.08. And I will say our positivity rate is at 3.08. We have X number of kids in quarantine. Um, when you factor that, um, it's, you know, I, I believe we'll be at about 5% of um, the under 20 population in Hopkinton will have been in quarantine um, over the last, what, two weeks. Um, or, or actually over the last month, which is, which is crazy. And, and so we'll make and plead our case. And then the Desi will say, well, how much uh, spread is there in the classroom? And, and, and we'll say, you know, we might've identified one over the last uh, month. And, um, and they'll say, well, you should keep the schools open because it's a safer option. And, um, and then this is this battle you know, and, and, and this is this is this is the battle that you know we're um, having to face is um, what um, you know. Do we jeopardize our uh, our standing? Do we jeopardize um, our, the accreditation and all these other factors that uh, Dr. Kavanaugh has to contend with? Um, are the kids going to be required to go to school longer to get those extra contact hours? Like Desi has been quite vocal um, about, um, you know, the fact that they want kids to stay in school. And um, so, you know, my job is to sit down and figure out, all right, what are our options? Um, as a former consultant, you know, I look at, uh, I look at loopholes and uh, exceptions and, um, what we can do because at the end of the day, you know, my, my interest is, is in protecting, um, you know, the children and the residents in the town of Hopkinton. 
So uh, you, you it, guys it's going to be an a, interesting week. You guys are doing a bang up job doing it. You guys, uh, you know, I see how hard you work living in town and everything. All right, so let's change it up a little bit. Here I am. I'm actually traveling. I'm going to fly down to North Carolina on Monday. I'm fully vaccinated for over right. over a month, right? I had my second vaccination at the right. beginning of March. So I'm going to go visit my newly born grandson. And I, I only plan on right. visiting them and then coming back home. Uh, how safe is airline travel for the vaccinated? And is there anything that I'm going to do that that would like cause like me spreading COVID, even though I won't have it, I'm vaccinated from it, but I would still wear my mask, still do everything I'm supposed to do. Uh, is there anything I should be concerned about or anything I should pay extra close attention to? Well, I mean, first off, I would say that, you know, it's important to be masked, you know, maybe even double masked when you're um, on the plane um, and, and potentially in close contact with other travelers. Um, you know, I don't want to burst anybody's bubble, but we've had at least one case of um, a fully vaccinated person in town contracting COVID. Um, you know, and it's the story that you kind of want to hear. They were completely asymptomatic. Um, they received the, we received the notification at the same time. Um, that the individual was about to go out for a run because they felt terrific. Um, and, um, the only reason they got um, tested was because there it's part of a um, there's a workplace testing uh, effort at this uh, at this company and uh, and they were they were beside themselves they had been fully vaccinated um, four weeks prior and uh, but but they were positive and it, what what likely happened is that uh, they they had COVID we believe. Um, right in the end of their nose where the swab was and it hadn't uh, spread anywhere else because the rest of the body had um, a, sufficient, a sufficient supply of um, antibodies to fend off uh, the virus that was trying to, you know, move from the nose into the rest of the body. And, um, and they were, you know, for the, for all, man, I believe for the most part, completely asymptomatic throughout the 10 days um, that they had tested positive and, uh, and then, um, they were successful at not spreading, uh, COVID, um, you know, within the household. Um, but, uh, so, so uh, the next, the, the, the next series of stuff Sean, that I have is we talks about getting vaccinated. You successfully, uh, ran two clinics, the first and second doses for our seniors and so forth. Three. I'm sorry, the three, yes, I, I remember we, the third, which I heard We, we snuck in one. <laughs> yes, so my question is, um, what are the continued efforts that the Hawking Health Department is doing to vaccinate our citizens? And when I say citizens, old to young, whatever, what are, what are some of the plans? And we only have uh, uh, six minutes left, so uh, what are the plans okay. to vaccinate the wonderful town of Hopkinton. Go. <laughs> well, first off, you know, we've got over 95% of our 75 plus have been vaccinated. Um, we have over, what is it, 84% of our 65 to 74 year olds have received their first shots. Um, we were, we're really, we're doing a terrific job at getting people vaccinated. And Casey and I have been pushing, um, you know, to open, you know, with Pfizer, we've been like, I'm actively, you know, petitioning to get, you know, our mass vaccination site open. Um, and, uh, Northborough and I are working, you know, two different angles. We have approval to open up a mass vaccination site, similar to the one in Natick or Gillette, where we'll be vaccinating on paper. They've, um, required us to commit to 3,750 shots a week. Um, but um, we hear that we are going to be provided vaccine either next week or the week after. We'll be running a mass clinic out of the Westboro Doubletree. Um, we'll be partnering with the towns of Ashland, Holliston, Boylston, um, 
Westboro, Northboro, Southboro. Um, and um, what the one of the reasons why we decided to go through with this is because it allows us to pull whatever, whatever amount of vaccine we get provided, say it's a thousand, we can then pull 250 uh, or 25% of that, um, those doses and distribute them directly to our home communities. So this is all about getting vaccine into our communities to um, increase um, the, uh, you know, just increase the probability that people from our communities are gonna be able to get access to a vaccine um, quicker than um, they would if they were in the uh, standard state system. Um, the um, people will be able to, you know, go into the mass vaccination website that the Commonwealth has set up. Um, they'll be able to see us um, and, and, and try to select for the, um, the Hopkinton site or the Westboro site. And, um, and then we will have, um, uh, we'll have specific um, um, access points or links that we will send out to the community um, to, um, you know, to representatives from the town. And, um, you know, one of the things that we're doing is instead of trying to take the easy route and going with Moderna or even with J&J, &J, um, our thought is that let's go for the Pfizer vaccine because the Pfizer vaccine is um, approved for youth 16 and above. So if we can get into this Pfizer stream, we have a greater, you know, um, you know, potential to start vaccinating our 16, 17, and eight. I mean, actually, up to 20 year olds as we um, as we move into uh, and through the summer months. So we'll be sending our our you know our freshmen um, will be sent to college vaccinated. And then um, we have a much better shot at getting our, uh, you know, our, you know, juniors and seniors vaccinated, and um, and you know what we're just trying to do is create opportunity for, you know, the residents in town. And it's uh, it's been a bear. I mean, I'm on the uh, I'm on the phone with, you know, our state reps and our state senators on a, about every other day. I, I just got an email from. Uh, Representative Dykema um, checking in our status. So she's uh, she's making calls right now, and um, and then my counterpart in Northboro is a uh, she's a, a bulldog. She's just uh, tearing at the uh, DPH to get answers. And um, you know because we have our first responders already, um, just like we did when we operated our Pfizer clinics and our other clinics in town. You know we've got everybody ready, we've got additional volunteers, um, we have the equipment, signage, computers. Um, and, and, and one thing that you know we don't really talk about is when we're running a clinic, the revenue, like the reimbursements for the shots, um, they come in, that, that revenue comes back into the towns. So instead of seeing you know, some of these corporations walking away with 45 bucks a shot, that revenue will come back into the communities. And, okay. and it's our position that, you know, we want to, again, put, you know, our communities at an advantage right. All right. So, so that we'll we save, can come out of We'll save COVID that for, for the next show, but we are out of time. And, Sean, thank you again so much for yeah. coming out. Take time. And listen, I only have one thing to tell you to do. Go to bed. Get some sleep. All right? Yep. <laughs> we love you. Yeah, and two again, hours isn't working. Right, right. All right. Thank you again, and uh, thank you for watching at home. We appreciate it, and we'll see you next Monday on the Hopkins Hangout Hour.